Hello fellow creatures and wild things, I am Cheyenne or Earthy Arts, and in this video I'm going to be taking you along the process of creating my art finals from basically start to finish. I've already got some concepts done for one of the projects, but for the other one I have not started or thought about whatever I'm doing at all. So you're going <laughs> to be able to see what my process is like, so let's get to it. So for my Art 105 final, we were supposed to create an artwork inspired by an artist of our choosing. And it honestly took me a while to choose an interesting artist because all the ones I was looking at just seemed to have like a really similar style as me. And I thought it would be more interesting if I were to go outside of my comfort zone for the final. And honestly, I would have loved to make artworks inspired off those other artists because they were a bunch of realistic wildlife artists. But I mean, I draw a bunch of wildlife right now, so it wouldn't really be much of a change for me. So I decided to go with Rain Port Levette. He is a Dutch painter from the mid to late 1900s, and I chose him because of his illustrations he did in the book Gnomes, which was written by Will Hugan. There's just a bunch of cute watercolor gnomes and scenarios and scenes interacting with each other or with like animals and stuff, and I thought it would be really fun to design my own gnome and have like a little scene with him in it. Okay, so yesterday was Black Friday and I ended up buying a whole bunch of stuff, but nothing was on sale at all. None of the art supplies that I needed. I got quite a few microns. I got like three of them, I think. And I got some nice handmade paper, which I'm going to be using for this gnome drawing. It is super thick. Listen to that. That's nice paper. And I'm gonna end up staining this one with tea. I think I'm gonna do that before I start working on my concept sketches some more. That way that can soak while I'm drawing. And then the other day on Thanksgiving, I also got a whole bunch of random supplies from outside for my other art project. So I think I might work on that one today. I'm not sure, but I might I may end up working on it tomorrow, but I don't know. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Okay, so I was originally going to do tea and coffee to stain the drawing. That didn't work. So I tried watercolor. That was too light. <laughs> and now I am using these inks that I got yesterday at Michael's. I don't really know what they are, but they they're working pretty well. This is the color that it's at right now. It's a bit more bright in person, but I think I'm gonna go over it with a couple more layers and get back with you guys, so. So 
So, as I said, the tea did not really work out at all. I ended up spending a lot of time that morning trying so hard to get to stain the paper and it just didn't work out. I even tried putting some coffee in the water, hoping that would darken up a little bit, which still fell through. So I just had to improvise and use other supplies because I needed to get the paper stained and dry before the afternoon so I'd be able to finish it, well, finish the sketch. And I ended up going with some Dollar Roni acrylic ink, which I got from Michael's Clearance. And it honestly worked better than what the tea could ever do. I'm super happy with the pigmentation of the ink and how well it spread it over the paper. But since I used a wash over the paper, it got everywhere. In terms of my gnome's character design, I ended up going with what was originally a joke outfit. Uh, when I was doing some concept sketches for the outfit, my friend said those pants looked like they were pulled up to his chest and it honestly stuck with me and I thought it was like peak character design. Skinny old man with his oversized pants pulled up to his chest. Some of the other outfits and color palettes were questionable, but I was just trying to expand my idea of his character besides green and brown, which ended up being his color scheme anyways, because who doesn't love a good neutral outfit? And of course, like any gnome, I had to add a red hat to top it off, just so that he was identifiable as a gnome and not just some extremely tiny guy next to a roly-poly. I just was really trying to go for the gnome vibe that Rain had in his artworks. Okay, so I think I've decided on the composition for this piece. I was originally going to do him either kneeling or standing next to his little roly-poly friend, but I drew them sleeping together and it's so cute and wholesome and I think I'm going to end up going with that. They're just taking a little nap in the woods and it's just really cute and yeah, I'm definitely going with that. So now I have to take a reference photo, so I'm probably just going to use myself and just take a picture of myself in that pose and then distort the anatomy to where it's an old man. So I think that's what I'm going to do because I really need a reference. And also I'm thinking about doing acrylic paint and I haven't done that in a while. So I may need to practice also. I don't know. I'll figure this stuff out later. <laughs> Thank you. 
Since I had the thumbnail sketch already laid out in my sketchbook, I basically went off that as well as the image I took myself, kind of interchanging features and anatomy, but still keeping the overall composition of the piece the same. And one thing that I do regret is not putting him higher on the paper, even just like a smidge higher. His leg ended up almost touching the bottom of the paper, which I was not intending. But since I already sketched the details, I just went with it. Because there's no way anyone would get me to re-sketch all of that again. And one thing I really enjoyed working on in the sketch was his face, and because I had already had a realistic rendering of his face, it was really easy to transfer that onto the actual artwork, even if it was like a three quarters view. If I didn't really have a realistic idea of what his face looked like, the sketching process would have definitely taken a whole lot longer to do. Okay, let me get one thing straight. I did not end up practicing using my acrylics beforehand, which I honestly regret because it would have probably been a whole lot easier to blend if I actually knew what I was doing. But even if I didn't practice beforehand, it wouldn't really matter because the face would eventually get covered up by layer colored pencil to tidy up any rough edges and marks. And to be completely fair, I don't actually think the paint job was that bad and kind of wish I kept his, this piece as a painting. But when working on artworks, my mind always jumps to colored pencils to be like my savior, and it's kind of like a crutch, you know? Uh, you can layer it over pretty much any medium, acrylic, oil, watercolor, marker, inks, literally anything. And I eventually want to lean off of using colored pencils as much, because I do think it could be limiting my creativity and holding me back from actually learning how to use mediums. But for now, since this was a final piece, I wanted to make sure it looked good, and colored pencils just kind of ensured that. I know how to use them well and how to blend them over lots of different surfaces, so like I said, they were kind of my crutch. I eventually got tired of painting shadows and details and ended up doing a base layer paint just to go over it with color pencil, because I knew I was wasting my time detailing with paint when it was just going to get covered up. And even though this paint was like Apple Barn or something, some really cheap paint that was usually thin, I it pulled through. It was like it loved this paper or something. It behaved like I expect gouache to behave. And since I've never really used gouache correctly or know how to, I'm just kind of going off how other artists apply it. It was thick but pretty creamy and it glided over the paper very easily, covering all the spots that would usually make you go over it in another layer. It was crazy. I did not expect it to behave like that at all. It just blew my mind.
Since I was further ahead on my Art 105 foundation design project, I needed to start my other final, a piece for my Art 107 class. This is my foundation drawing class, and for this assignment we were supposed to make like an exploded view drawing, which is basically like a blueprint, where something looks like it's disassembled to see the parts, but still like a part of the whole, if that makes sense. This drawing was supposed to be part of a sculpture or monument that or pitfalls over the semester. And when I first heard the parameters of this assignment, I was like, oh, this is probably gonna be pretty boring. I can probably just push it off, and I did. But at some point when my teacher was asking me what I planned on creating, I made something up on the spot and kind of decided to go with it. I've been stressing about the wrong project this whole time. I was stressing about the gnome drawing, so I wasn't sure if I was going to finish it on time because it's such a detailed drawing, but that's due in two weeks. My 107 project is due in two days. Yeah, um, I thought it was due the 5th, it's due the 1st, and it's due Thursday, and it's Monday. No, it's Tuesday. Great. So, I ended up working on it a tiny bit during class, but even though I had like two and a half hours to work on it, all that I managed to do was a stick, a bone, and a couple strings. Not even all the strings. I was wanting to get it to where it was like V-shaped, like that, and that didn't happen, so I'm just leaving it like this and going with uh, what I got for now, so <laughs> I really gotta work on this. An ode to your pitfalls. That was the prompt, and boy was it a difficult one. Overall, since it was a foundation class, I thought it was pretty easy. Still life, sometimes drawing a skeleton, perspective, all like the basic things you learn in, like, well, a foundation class. And all of it was things that I already knew how to do or knew where to start. So when trying to come up with a list of what I struggled with in this class was super difficult. My teacher ended up posting an assignment where we had to list 20 things we struggled with and that stressed me out and I probably should have just put this list as one of the answers because where am I supposed to start if I felt like this semester is easy? And that's where my creativity comes in. Was I creative this semester or was I just falling back on my comfort mediums and media that I enjoy drawing? Sure, I would like to brand myself as someone who enjoys making wildlife art with smooth blending, neutral colors, but is that really all that I am? That was something that I really had to think about. As someone who struggles with getting outside their comfort zone, I know I had to include some, include that somehow in this piece, whether that be a literal drawing or sculpture of me struggling, or with something I struggle with. And personally, creating 3D pieces is already a struggle for me, and I've never really thought creatively in a physical, three-dimensional way, and I've always thought in like creating 2D artworks, so that was something to go off of, even if it was like the bare minimum. So with the idea that I struggle with 3D art, I expanded on that. Why do I struggle with three-dimensional pieces, and why is it harder for me to think creatively in that way? And what is one way to explore that in a way that I would enjoy and be entertained by the process? Okay, so it's December 4th, and I've already had my Art 107 final, which was on Thursday, and it is now Sunday, so I have to finish my gnome drawing. I ended up working on it quite a bit last week during my art class. Um, it doesn't look like I worked on it a whole lot, but I ended up adding colored pencil over top of some of the paint in the grass layer, so this is what it currently looks like. 
like I ended up blending out the background a little bit more but I think what I'm going to end up doing today is just having an overall base layer of paint on the entire thing because I still have all that at the bottom left to do and that's going to be detailed. So I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. So I'm just going to add some paint onto this and see where it goes from there. So. One thing I ended up doing on my Instagram while working on this little guy was putting out a question box for names. It was so fun seeing all the names that people were tossing up. I'm not too great at naming characters and usually struggle coming up with them, so it was super entertaining and helpful seeing what you all suggested. And by far, my favorite name was Brick. It's super simple, funny, and I feel like it just fits his personality. Some of the other ones that were tossed up were Gilbert Filbert II, which I really like, Nomeo, Gerald, Buddy, Gwen the Foster, Steve the Beekeeper, Another Gerald, Jeffrey, Uncle Grandpa, Bjosner, and Sir Bumble III. All of these were amazing name suggestions and I would have not been able to come up with any of these. So I feel like, honestly, I feel like his name would be Sir Gilbert Filbert II, but his friends call him Brick is like a nickname or something. But I think that I think that just fits him, you know. Okay, so it's now the 7th, and this thing is due in two days. I feel like I've gotten quite a lot done on this piece, but still not enough, because I worked on it quite a bit on Monday whenever I was at my art class, and I got quite a bit of the color pencil done. I got all of the paint, like, layered out, except for the hands. I did not end up finishing that, like, just as, like, a base layer of paint. So I think all that I have to do now is color pencil stuff, but it's still gonna take a while. And honestly, I think I might add a tiny bit of soft pastel to it, because I don't like how saturated it is, and I think it could use more blending, but I've overworked the paper and color pencil quite a bit, so it won't really blend anymore. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. point I was already tired of this drawing. I had spent two weeks designing the character and just another to get the sketch and background layer of paint done so I was just not having it. The paint agreed for the most part but when I got down to working with the colored pencil it just did not agree with the paper. Since it was a paper meant for thick paints and like wet mediums it definitely didn't handle the pencil well but at least it handled the paint I guess. The paper was too coarse and prevented the pencils from blending smoothly and just prevented me from blending in general. You could pretty much only add like two or three layers of pencil before you began to overwork the paper, so that was definitely frustrating to work around. So I ended up using some soft pastels to blend out any imperfections or to add like lighting changes that the color pencil just couldn't do, which I'm honestly super happy about. If I haven't used the soft pastels, I feel like it wouldn't have caught the vibe that I was trying to go for. 
and I wanted it to feel super calming, like a nighttime setting and some simple warm lighting coming from like somewhere. So I decided to make some random fire embers as if, like as if they're sitting beside a fire and have that cast onto them. And I was wanting it to feel like fireflies, but since the roly poly was that big, if the fireflies were to scale it, they'd take up like the rest of the paper. So I kind of just had to go with fire embers. And along with adding a bunch of yellow soft pastels to the paper, I also added a bunch of black just to darken up the piece, since the colors were very saturated. Oh my god, these are finally done. <laughs> they took so long to do, specifically the gnome drawing. That took so long. Oh, I'm so glad that finals are behind me. I've already had my critiques. They went well. They went well. And I can just breathe, <laughs> finally. But overall, I'm really happy with my Art 107 final, the sculpture. That was completely out of my comfort zone, and I think it turned out amazing. I did not expect it to turn out that well. My gnome, on the other hand, it's great. It looks good. I mean, it looks like an artwork. Not my best, but, I mean, I finished it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad to have them done. I ended up naming my sculpture A Touch of the Earth. That was the title of the piece, but I have not figured out a title for my gnome piece. So let me know in the comments if you have a title idea and make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye!